Let's get Grayson's grades in for last night's debacle in Cleveland, Scott. And uh, obviously, uh, you were there last night and in the locker room afterwards talking to some of this game. Do you sense that there's any sort of panic or um, concern from, from inside that locker? Do they look like a team that's like, man, we've got to you know flip the switch on it or we're in trouble? No, there was none of that, uh, which was a little surprising. Uh, I tried to get Zach Ertz to kind of admit that maybe the starters should play a series next week just to try to get something going offensively heading into the regular season. And he's like, nah, we're good. You know, we're good. We're, we're not panicked. We're fine. We don't need to play next week. And, uh, you know, that comes. I, I think more of that is, is guys not wanting to get hurt right before the season starts, which, which certainly is important as well. But, you know, they didn't say they're worried. I think you got a little bit of concern out of uh, – out of Doug Peterson from the exchange he had with Aaron Andrews at halftime uh, that, that she then relayed as well as, you know, some frustration that they're just not putting it together. And, um, you know, you, you can go against your ones in practice all you want, offense against defense, but uh, you like to try to drum up some sort of consistency or momentum. Uh, and every time they tried to get a drive going last night, they shot themselves in the foot by turning it over and, and just, you know, ended the drive or – Missed a field goal late in the game. I mean, you know, anything that could go wrong did go wrong yesterday. But these guys don't say they're panicked at all, and their body language says they're not panicked at all. I just sense that they're kind of, you know, I think a little bit frustrated that they're not putting the pieces together right now. That just seems to be, Scott, the way of the league now, that these guys all understand that these games are essentially essentially not only meaningless in the standings, but meaningless in terms of getting ready for the year, it seems like, anymore, that – Whatever goes on in the actual games for these veterans is not important to them. It's more what happens in training camp and these practices leading up, apparently. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, for the most part, that that is the mentality of today's league. And, uh, you know, gone are the days where, where you know, this quote-unquote dress rehearsal maybe meant a little bit more than what you saw last night from the Eagles, at least. Uh, I would say the Browns took it upon themselves a little bit more to have something going, but even they didn't play a great game. The thing I left most of all with last night was, you know, this. I think this Browns defense deserves a little bit of respect, and Miles Garrett could likely have a very big year this year. I mean, he seems like a bit of a beast, and that's kind of what I left with walking away there. I mean, the Browns didn't take advantage of four turnovers. Nobody got in the end zone last night. It was just an ugly game all around. And I, I think no matter what team you are, you're going back to the film room today. You're kind of going into your last week of the preseason. Some guys fighting for jobs. Starters not feeling any pressure at all. And, and you know, the, I think the biggest thing that happened was Carson Wentz's workout before the game. The way he was moving around on that leg to kind of say, maybe he's going to be ready for week one. Certainly looked good in what, what he was doing on it. Scott Grayson's grades. Let's look at some of the grades at 973ESPN.com. Well, let's start from the bottom here. F, Vitae, Jones, the kicker, Jake Elliott. Uh, in the F category, Vitae, if he had a play, is are you concerned or is this just lack of game planning? I think that's certainly part of it. And that that's kind of my word to fans who, you know, I could see him blowing up Twitter last night with all kinds of concerns with this offense. And I think some of those concerns are, are rightfully so. I think some of those concerns, are, look, the, the Browns didn't have to worry about uh, a number one, two, or even three running back in the Eagles' backfield last night. Uh, it, it was Wendell Smallwood and Matt Jones. And, you know, they can just pin their ears back and go after guys like Vitae. And, and Miles Garrett was one of the ones that was eating them up a little bit. So I think it was a good test for Big V to have to go up against some of that and kind of get himself going. But, look, how many times can you let, like, a turnstile here get these defenders get to your starting quarterback? Foles got hurt last week because of Vitae's missed blocks. Last night he gave up a sack fumble again. So he's got a lot of work to clean up. Uh, they definitely missed Jason Pete you know, Peters, and, and I think it'll be great when he gets in there, and I think that offensive line will get a little bit of a shot in the arm just by having him back. Uh, and you can still see Jason Peters working with Big V a lot on the sidelines, looking at film and things like that. So definite room to grow. We saw what Vitae could be, the way he played at the end of last season. He's just not there right now. Scott Grayson with us. Grayson's great. Scott, you gave different grades to the two guys battling it out for that nickel corner spot. How did you grade Sidney Jones and Avante Maddox? Well, I gave them both Bs, and I, I just thought that it was a little interesting in that Sidney Jones didn't really have many chances, uh, but he did a really good job, uh, I thought, staying with his receivers in coverage. The Browns got down to the one-yard line. Jones was involved in several of those plays that I just thought were bad choices by Tyrod Taylor more than anything else. He threw into a lot of coverage, 
Jones was in the middle of all that kind of traffic at times that he was trying to fo- force the ball into. And, you know, I think that Sidney Jones is, is coming along. He's still trying to learn that inside corner position in that nickel. And uh, there's some of that that I talked to him about after the game. You look at Avante Maddox. He played with the second string. You know, Sidney Jones got the first team reps. And you can read into that what you want. I think they really wanted to get a look at Sidney Jones and some of those opportunities. And I thought for the most part he passed the test. Avante Maddox certainly pressuring him for that spot as well. Had an interception in the game. What I saw in the interception, too, was the way that Maddox sat down and kind of stayed out of Baker Mayfield's sight. Didn't see him at all. And he popped up, picked the pass off, and put a nice 36-yard return on it. Uh, and I thought those kind of things were somewhat impressive from Avante Maddox as well. I think right now Sidney Jones has the edge in that battle, but I think you have to like what you've seen out of the two guys, uh, certainly last night. And at the quarterback position, Nate Sudfeld, everybody that's calling for, oh, Nick Foles is terrible. Yes, he's throwing Sudfeld. He looks good. What grade did you give him last night? Because I didn't think he looked much better than Nick. No, he really didn't. Uh, I gave him a C. Now, I will say Sudfeld has had a really good preseason up till now, but even he didn't play well last night. Um, you know, he had a really nice thrown ball uh, to Rashard Davis in the back of the end zone that was initially ruled a touchdown, dropped it in the perfect spot, but Davis' second foot, you know, maybe a toe on the on the end line in replay, overturned that, and therefore the Eagles ended up losing the game. But outside of that, he still didn't have some good plays. Held on to the ball too long, which he hasn't been making that mistake the first, you know, especially last week in New England. Uh, and I think that, you know, that cost him. He got sacked, at three, you know, several times, partly because he was holding on to the ball too long. And that's something that he's got to clean up. He was just 11 of 21 for 72 yards. And I gave Nick Foles a D. Obviously, his performance, not good at all. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a lot of frustration right now, and I think that's why Carson Wentz is sitting here licking his chops thinking, man, I'm, I'm getting ready to go, and, and how could they not go with me if I'm ready? Uh, Scott Grayson was there last night, and uh, obviously the Eagles look awful in the game. Uh, you know, half the room here is hitting the panic button, the other half saying it doesn't really matter. I saw Nick Foles look awful in a game against the, the, Ra- the Raiders uh, going into – uh, Christmas night going into the playoffs last year, and everybody, heck, I remember taking people saying they got to call up Kaepernick. Um, that's how bad it got that people wanted to go outside the organization, and Foles obviously turned it around. So if they had to play with Nick Foles for a couple of games, three, four, five games, or whatever it would end up being, you gave him a D. But are you legitimately concerned about Foles? Like, you know, did uh, the off-season book tour get to him, or is all this uh, MVP hype, or is it just, again, not game planning and it's just, you know, a couple of preseason moments? Well, he has plays that he could make and he didn't make. Uh, that's where you could kind of say you might be a little concerned. The way he hung the ball in the air that was picked off. Um, I mean, you can't really blame him for the sack fumble when Vitae is not really making a block on that play. But little things, that I think a lot of it, like you said, is – not game planning. Look what happened with Foles last year when Doug Peterson game planned to his strengths. I don't think they're doing that right now. He doesn't have a running back he can rely on that the defense has to respect right now. Uh, Certainly, Smallwood picked up a few gains, 14-yard gains occasionally. I thought Smallwood had a pretty good game overall last last night, but he doesn't have Ajayi. He doesn't have even Corey Clement or Darren Sproles. He doesn't have Alshon Jeffrey on the outside. He doesn't have Nelson Aguilar in the slot. You know, all these things do have to add up, and I'm not trying to make a bunch of excuses, but I do think that a big part of it is they were not game planning to kind of work around or stay away from Miles Garrett even last night. They were just running plays, and I think a lot of that is very similar to what happened at the end of the regular season, like you said, uh, with how Nick Foles did not look very good. I think it's because they weren't calling a whole bunch of plays that made him look good or that worked to his strengths because they didn't want to put that on tape uh, or on film for opponents. I think that's a little bit of what's going on. Now, some people may say you're making excuses for him. I'm also saying he did not take advantage of plays that were there, and that is something he's got to clean up. So I think it's a little bit of both, and that's where I would say you don't have to push the panic button right now, but you've clearly seen what you're going to see out of the first-team offense. You won't see him next week. This is what you're riding into the regular season with, uh, and I think you have right to be a little bit concerned about it. Scott, before we let you go, uh, you gave a pretty high grade to a running back that I saw someone else in the regular beat media think isn't going to make the team, and that's Wendell Smallwood. Do you think he did enough to secure a job last night, and were you contemplating that when I saw you on my TV with that sort of quizzical face like, hmm, I wonder if this guy's going to be around in a couple weeks? 
I think right now this, of the running backs they have on the roster, he is likely going to make the team. Now, that being said, you're always watching the waiver wires. You're always looking to see, is there another guy who gets cut from somebody else because they're too thick at that position and you want to take a shot at him. Now, Wendell Smallwood knows this offense. He's been here for a few years. I think all that factors in. Uh, he did look pretty good on some runs when he actually had a lane to run through, and then he extended for back-to-back 14-yard carries. His average was 5.3 yards per carry. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's something that's good enough to make the chains move for you when you give him the ball. Um, and he hasn't had a whole lot of the turnover issues uh, this preseason that he has had at times in the past. His biggest problem has been staying healthy. Injuries have crept into his you know, past as well. It's part of his, you know, resume at this point. Uh, I think right now Smallwood has done enough to get that job. But um, like I said, you never know when cuts are made who may end up falling out there that you end up saying that might be a better option for us. And I know that those, you know, the Eagles brass are looking at that to see if somebody does fall through the cracks somewhere that they think might be a better option. And uh, you also gave Matt Jones an F. So if he was up against Matt Jones, who obviously had the fumble, and as soon as he fumbled, Twitter lit up yeah. with, yeah. apparently he's not going to make the team. So if it was Jones against Smallwood, it looks like Smallwood might have the edge there. We know Pumphrey didn't play last night. Josh Adams, who uh, looked pretty good in the first week. We'll see what happens next week against the Jets. We'll have another edition of Grayson's Grades. You can always check out the full list of grades at 97.3 ESPN.com. Scott, we'll talk next week, pal. Actually, I won't, but uh, no, Scott will be in hosting next week. Who am I kidding? (laughs) Scott Grayson will be doing Grayson's Grades live here. Yeah, it'll be a little different. Hey, let's kind of spice it up a little bit, kind of fix up the end of the preseason that way, right? Yeah, man. All right. We're looking forward to those. So always fun to have Scott uh, kind of host some of the shows because he's around the team uh, so much. And he is – are you back from Cleveland yet? Yeah, I'm back. It was uh, it was such a fun time. Nice. Well, uh, I know there, there's a lot, of, a lot of buzz out there for that team, right? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a writer after the game, and they are upbeat. I mean, they, they kind of feel like their defense is really going to help move things. They were kind of pleased overall in what they saw of their quarterbacks last night, although both of them got a little nicked up. There's optimism in Cleveland. We were talking about it yesterday on, uh, when I was in, when I was in there before the game. Remember when you had me on? And it was interesting to see a little bit. There's definite optimism that that, you know, that, that team is moving in the right direction. Uh, I don't think they're going to finish 0-16 this year. I don't think they're going to even finish last in their division. I was impressed with their defense. The question is whether or not they can build around it. All right, pal. Well, uh, we uh, certainly appreciate it, as always, as uh, Scott Grayson, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Thanks, man. You got it, Mike.